Yeah, so neural technology as it stands uh, mean to combine the brain uh, or the nervous system um, to all uh, its extent with technology. So that definitely takes different different forms and shapes uh, of, of technology, whether it's, for example, I was mentioning cognitive training. So trying to train your cognitive um, capacities so as, as I mentioned earlier, with technology. So for example, we, we've heard about uh, some, some brain games, for example. That's one sort of two to one end of the spectrum of, uh, of neurotechnology where it's really to train your brain. So it really, it's related, it's technology related to your brain. So that's really one end of the spectrum. And on the other end, it's really more about the hard technology. So for example, we see when we think about technology, we usually think about, for example, computer chips, robotics and things like that. Um, so for example, implanting a chip in your brain for uh, epilepsy or things like that, more on the medical uh, side of things, that's also neurotechnology. So anything related with your brain, uh, nervous system and technology qualifies as neurotechnology. So it's, it's really very wide spectrum. So now within that realm, there are obviously subcategories. Brain computer interfaces is one of them. And brain computer interfaces is really the interface between a computer or a machine. So the field is, soft, is often referred to uh, instead of brain computer interfaces as brain machine interface, because it's not necessarily just a computer per se, but it could be uh, an exoskeleton, uh, a machine in general. So this is really the, uh, the realm of connecting your brain with a machine. What that means is that the machine is trying to read or interpret what's going on in your brain to, uh, to do something. So one clear example, the field was really created for people that are locked in or paralyzed. So their brain is fully functional, is fully intact. Um, so they, they, they are very smart people, but they are locked in. Their body just not responds to their brain. So that's really unfortunate because they are locked into their own head. So we're trying to read what's happening or to understand with machines by putting, for example, electrodes, uh, so small sensors that will read electrical activity. Uh, so you've probably seen these images, whether it's hospital or in movies, where you have a kind of a cap, kind of like a swimming cap with a bunch of wires um, plugged into it. These are called electrodes that records the EEG electroencephalography. Um, signal so that's re uh, that's recording your brain electrical activity and from that pattern that electrical activity we're trying to uh infer what's going on so for example if i ask you to um to to move to think about moving your left arm or think about moving your right arm this will produce different electrical activity in your brain and for for some some specific things where we know kind of where to look into your brain, and then we will try to train an algorithm with machine learning um, to differentiate different mental states to give you some commands. So, for example, uh, in in, the, in that space, when you're trying to control a machine, for example, a wheelchair. So let's let, let's let, let's give a clear example. You're locked in, um, and then we want to make you control a wheelchair with your brain. So basically, we'll put you the cap, as I mentioned earlier, the EEG system. Uh, you'll be on your wheelchair, and then we'll train you, and we'll say, for example, think about moving your left arm, then do nothing. Then think about moving your left arm, do nothing. And then we'll do that over and over again, a uh, high number of, of times of repetition, and then we'll train a machine learn learning algorithm to try to pick up when you're trying to move your left arm. Um, then we'll do the same thing, for example, with your right arm, and then this will give you, for example, do nothing, move left and move right as commands to send to the, to the wheelchair. So this is the kind of thing that we will do uh, in, for now, it's more in the research and really kind of a university level. So there is not really systems out there uh, at this point that you can just buy and just use yourself or anything like that. It's really, it's really just getting started. One of the reasons is because the accuracy of such system is really limited. So it takes a lot of training, a lot of hours of training. Um, so obviously when you are locked in, even 100 hours of training is nothing because time has a very different meaning when you're locked in, obviously. 
Sure. And when you say, you know, locked in for our listeners, um, you know, one good example is, um, you know, the case of uh, Stephen Hawking, where just because due to his disease, um, you know, his brain is still fully functional and he's still absolutely brilliant, but uh, his disease makes it impossible for um, his brain to actually move his body or, you know, a great deal of his body. So I think that's that's probably what you meant there. And also, I, th- I think we can sum this up by saying that, you know, neural interfaces and uh, uh, brain machine interfaces, they're trying to make thought and code almost interchangeable. Is that right? Where, um, you know, the thoughts that uh, we have in our brains can be translated into a code that machines can read, interpret, and act upon. Totally. So, yeah, 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 to- totally. To-, to some extent, so we are really early, but if we try to uh, uh, extrapolate what BCIs will be in the future, what, and when I say BCI or BMI, that's the short abbreviation for brain-computer interfaces. Um, and if we try to extrapolate and foresee in the future what it's going to be like, obviously we can think about like the matrix, right? So like it's all happening kind of like in your head. And when you're controlling, when you're controlling things with your head, uh, with your own thoughts. So it, it's that seamless integration with uh, technology and the, di- the digital world with your, uh, with, with your brain. So obviously that's kind of, a, I would say, open to debate where and how far we'll be able to push it and merge it and understand the brain because right now we don't, one of the main limitations is that we don't really understand the brain very much at all.